Hi everyone and welcome to a tutorial series for the procedural part. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Hierarchical Instant Static Meshes, or HISM for short. Uh, specifically, how to convert our props and our foliage from individual static mesh actors to instant static meshes. And if you're fairly new to Unreal, you may not have heard, uh, but the whole idea here is I'm going to give you guys the... Uh, the very very high level explanation but uh, um the way the way um unreal works is if you have a single object that you place in your level uh say a rock or a chair or a tree and then you multiply or du or duplicate that object a thousand times in your level unreal will have to draw all those thousand objects one at a time and that's very simplified it's not exactly like that uh, but just to give you the idea so what we can do is we can convert these objects into one single instant static mesh actor, which will tell Unreal that instead of trying to draw all those trees or objects individually, it can do it all at the same time. And that way, because it's the exact same object, it knows that it doesn't have to worry about any changes uh, to the material or the mesh itself. It just draws it one, all in one draw call. And that usually gives you a performance advantage. This is the exact same system that the foliage uh, on your landscape uses. If you've ever painted foliage, right, in this mode, and you paint your foliage, you'll notice that you can have thousands and thousands of trees and performance is extremely high. You're seeing it right here as I'm going down and you're looking at the grass. These grass patches are actually individual meshes right? And the way the material is doing it, we are spawning literally hundreds of thousands and sometimes millions of meshes for grass to cover the entire landscape, yet performance is extremely good because we're, we're spawning instances of the exact same mesh. Uh, so Unreal knows that all of the grass uh, meshes are the exact same, and it can do that in a very optimized way. So we can use the, the very similar system for our foliage and for our props. Uh, notice that this only works for static meshes. So for example, if we spawn uh, a prop like the Ferris wheel, which is a, a blueprint class, you can convert that into a static, instant static mesh because uh, it's a blueprint with code and animations and things like that. So this will only work with static meshes, right? So if we go ahead just to sh show how, how this works and start spawning some foliage, now I'm gonna spawn quite a bit here. We're gonna we're gonna saturate this park with a lot of trees, right? I don't even know how many trees we have, but as you can see here, we have a lot. My framer right now is about 52, and if I click on play here, and I'm gonna maximize, you can see that I have about uh, 60 frames per second. 58 to 62 frames per second is kind of changing here. And as soon as I move away, my frame rate goes to 120, right? So obviously here, uh, Unreal is not rendering every single object because we're doing occlusion calling, right? Anything that's not visible, you don't have to draw it. So we're getting about 68 frames per second here, but we can actually see that each individual tree here is an actor. And you can go ahead and delete it. You can move it. You can do whatever you want, right? If we come back here to the park and we select foliage A to HISM, in other words, go ahead and grab the foliage and convert it to an act from an actor to an HISM. Notice now that we have a bunch of static meshes here. We press the button and all of those things are converted into one single actor, as you can see here that has all of the trees. Now, if we click play here, you'll notice that we're not really getting a lot of performance. As a matter of fact, in this case, we are getting, you can see that we're at 70 frames per second. So we gained maybe around eight frames per second. We were about 60 to 62, we're now at 70 to 72. So, okay, we gained about eight to 10 frames per second which is not bad, but it's not a, a huge uh, difference, right? Uh, the way you can further improve that is that notice now that we're rendering all of the different actors in the scene. But depending on your game, if you're really close here, you may not need to render all of the trees in the back. 
and for that I've included a little setting. So if you click on the individual actor right here for all the trees, notice that there's a section called setup and there's two th settings here, start call distance and end call distance. Calling something is basically removing it from the level, making sure that it's not visible anymore. It's not being drawn. Um, and right now the default setting is 150,000 units. So it's really, really far, but we can change this to something way smaller. Say, let's just make it 20,000. And let's change the end call distance to 25,000. And notice now that about half the trees are not even rendering anymore. So as I go back, notice that the trees are not even rendering. So as you get closer, based on the camera location, the trees are going to render uh, and disappear. So again, if you're if you're using a flight simulator, obviously this wouldn't work, right? You're flying around. But if you're a player and you're here, you don't need to see the trees all the way in the back, right? And that way you can control the culling of the trees. Uh, we can make it even more aggressive. Let's make it like 10,000 and like 12,000, right? Um, so you can play with these values uh, to try to get some performance back. In this case, we gained, now we're about 80 frames per second. So we gain a further 10 frames per second, right? And it's not exact because again, Unreal is doing some culling automatically. Uh, but the point is, you can play around with these values. Uh, it may or may not make a huge difference. It really depends on your machine specs. I have a pretty decent machine myself. Uh, so Unreal uh, does some optimization in the background. But if you have a lower end machine, this may be a better option for you uh, as far as uh, optimization. All right. We can do the same thing with our props. So if we go ahead and spawn our central actors here, create our pathways, spawn our props. There's a lot of props here. And we're not gonna spawn foliage because I wanna, I wanna make it very easy to detect. Notice that some of these props are blueprints themselves, like this guy right here, BP, right? But some of these props, like the lights, are static meshes. So right now, again, if I click on play, I'm still getting a very good um, frame rate, but uh, I can obviously convert the static meshes into instant static meshes. And that would mean the lights and the gazebos in the case of the park. But if you have more static meshes, it will work just the same. So all you would do is again, select the park and go into 2A, props actors to instant static meshes and as, as soon as i do that and i select one of the lights notice that all of the lights are now selected so instead of each individual light being one actor all of the lights are now a single actor and the exact same thing as you saw earlier we can have a call distance here because we don't need to render the lights that are really far away that's kind of a waste right so we can make this ten thousand to fifteen thousand And notice that now the lights that are far away are not rendering and only the ones that are nearby. And you can see that we do, we have the same deal for the benches, same deal for the gazebos and the same for the tables. And if we go further than that and we say, okay, now spawn your foliage and then convert our foliage two hierarchical links and static meshes. Now we see that all of our foliage is one mesh. All of our lights is one instance mesh. All of our uh, gazebos are one mesh. And this is how when you combine all these things, then you can you can try and get the best performance possible. All right, that is pretty much it guys. That's the idea. Like I said, uh, you don't necessarily have to do it. Uh, Test it out in your in your case for your machine. It may give you decent performance. Uh, it may not, but the option is there. All right, guys. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.